Hello my beautiful little mugglets, today we are discussing if you should pull or pass for Euphina. We recently got a new banner for Euphina. For anyone that missed my updated top 10 heroes, she did score rank 8. I guess technically out of 11, but she was up there. Uh, so, in my opinion, at least she is a very good hero. I'm going to leave a poll up in the top right hand corner in the form of a little eye, as I usually do for these. And so you can see other people's opinions, whether you should pull or pass for her. As it almost always is, it depends on your current state of the game, what kind of heroes you already have access to. Like in my case, I can see Euphina being really useful for PvP. We're going to do a little bit of an overview for her. Uh, she's one of those special heroes where you can soul burn one of her skills and get an extra turn. Basically just, you know, extra turn for soul burn. And those are always really nice, especially for PvP, Guild War, stuff like that. Because you're getting a lot more value out of one turn. So that's really cool by itself, but also Dragon Charge, incredibly strong single target attack. Not only can it do tons and tons of damage, but if they don't die, then they'll get stunned. And then she can do even more damage when they're buffed, which is pretty common on a lot of PvP teams, as long as someone has an immunity set, which again is common, or there's someone like Moonlight Cecilia in there, which gives everyone a barrier, which also counts as a buff. 50% extra damage. That's crazy. Let's see who's stronger. I'll destroy you. And then you can instantly follow that up with Dragon's Roar which can dispel a buff from all enemies up to 85% chance AoE silence, and then giving herself increased attack and speed. I'll show you the dragon's power. You. And then of course on basic, always love to see it, defense down 50, up to 50% chance for two turns. Love it, love it, can be really good for PvE too. Um, let's preview those skills, let's check out her ultimate animation, always like I'll to check that out. I mean I've seen power. it before but... Here we go. Yeah. It's 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 a little short, but it's still really nice. Zoom. So yeah, you can soul burn S3, go immediately to S2, which is an AoE attack. Silencing. High chance for silence, especially once you get that Mola Gorid. 85 AoE silence. Definitely pretty good. And then yeah, defense break. Let's see who's stronger. So all in all, she really does have a nice kit, uh, very strong, very strong single target damage, and then, you know, we have a lot of utility on her AoE attack, which again, I can't reiterate that enough, you can chain straight away, which is important. And besides that, we have a new artifact going on here, Merciless Glutton, which seems to fit really, really well with her. So the combat readiness is a bit useless, you know, I'd rather see that crit damage or something. If you were to max this, it's a 100% chance to get increased effectiveness for two turns when an enemy is defeated. Currently it's 50, I assume it's going to go to 75 once you max out a base artifact, so skill level 6. And you know, for what I imagine, this would be really good. You know, she starts off with her super strong single target, hopefully it just kills someone, then you get that effectiveness, and then you can hopefully, you know, chain her S2, wipe some buffs, silence them, it's all good, you know? Phyllis. And then there is one other very important thing to consider. She is one of the heroes that already have their exclusive equipment, and hers is quite good. So this first one, 35% chance to extend the caster's buff duration by a turn when using double slash. <laughs> I'm not sure if they've patched this already, but I saw some crazy things with this. So, uh, like in Labyrinth. So as showed me, I think it may have been himself or someone else, I'm not sure. Uh, they were in Labyrinth and they had an invincibility buff. And there was a Euphina with a counter set. I'm going to assume a slow Euphina so they could just counter more often. And they had like nine turns of invincibility and that just kept sustaining. So even when they were at, you know, negative 50 in Labyrinth, they could just keep going on. I mean, obviously their speed is heavily reduced once you're under 30. So... You know, she she just kept counter-attacking, getting that buff duration, stacking up and up and up. That seems absolutely insane to me, that you can just go through the entire labyrinth as long as it doesn't get dispelled by something. So I guess some bosses, you know, uh, it won't work too well. But still, I thought that was pretty insane. For PvP, increasing the chance of silence with Dragon's Roar sounds good. Uh, I think that would bump it up to 100% then once uh, you Mulgora it. And then you got some extra damage with double slash on that second one. I'd say in a lot of PvP scenarios, you're not gonna be using basic attack very often. 
um, if you're using her in like a cleave team. So PvP, I'd go Dragon's Roar. At least for Labyrinth, I'd be uh, curious to try the 35% extend buff with a counter set that might be for pretty funny unless they patched it already i don't know i don't have her but yeah basically just something to think about but yeah overall she is a very good hero i personally don't really need more single target or cleavers actually i've invested so much into judge kisa that i'm probably just going to be using her forever she could definitely be good for guild war though since i can't bring judge kisa in both teams for me personally i'm not going to summon for her just because i've summoned for literally every other banner they've just been throwing out good hero banners after good hero banners which kind of sucks because it's like i mean i guess i did get refunded for alencia's banner so that one kind of didn't count but yeah being able to take out one dangerous hero on the other side like a seaside bellona or something and then silence the rest with her aoe or remove annoying buffs maybe both awesome as far as pve goes i've seen her do very very well in all hunts except wyvern because she's wood and wyvern's fire that massive massive single target hit can really even like speed along those hunts as far as gear goes i just build her pure offense if you don't have a combat readiness pusher like ox lots for pvp then um you'll probably want some speed in there as well just speeds are generally good when you don't have combat readiness pushers if you're trying to like one shot pve bosses though i'd probably not build her too fast because you want to kind of you know get your debuffers off first defense break and buffers for the attack up and whatnot before she does that big single target hit but yeah crit rate crit damage attack all the general offensive stuff she is she is probably one of the most class cannon warriors warriors are meant to be more on the bruiser side but she is definitely um she's definitely one of the more glassy ones she doesn't have too much defense so may as well just make her do as much damage as possible you know very nice attack for a warrior you know okay health pretty good speed too so maybe just like a speed set but like attack boots you know uh, you could consider that. A couple speed subsets thrown in there. She'll be fast enough. Also gets a bit extra crit chance and damage on Awakening, which is very nice to see. Artifact-wise, again, the new artifact, Merciless Glutton, does sound pretty good for her in PvP, so that her second skill can do the things without you having to build a bunch of effectiveness on her. Uh, you know, the silence, the buff removal, etc. As uses Dracoplate on her, which is just a really good warrior artifact in general 30 percent extra crit damage 60 percent crit damage reduction if you do for some reason build your euphina a bit more tanky sacred scythe would would be all right for self-sustain though i typically only recommend that for you know more bruiserish types and then you know there's portrait of the saviors which is obviously really good when you want to try and one shot they're going to be above 50 percent health this will more guarantee that she does in fact one shot someone but do be aware it's banned in real time arena so if you're planning on doing that then that's obviously not going to work mulagora wise i'd obviously have to say s3 is the most important to max out first this is the skill that makes euphina so awesome Huge, huge single target damage. Dragon Drawer, of course, I'd recommend plus three. So 85% chance to silence with her artifact, 100. I don't like messing with RNG if possible. And yeah, if you're gonna have your Euphina more PvE oriented, Double Slash, very, very nice as well. I would say at least a plus five, but her Double Slash can actually do some very solid damage as well. So, you know, plus six is 15% more damage, which is definitely significant. Just max out everything, honestly. <laughs> but yeah, basically, if you have a need for a massive single target damage dealer, one that's good in a lot, in a lot of PvE content and good for PvP, well-rounded, good hero, also waifu, big time, of course. You can never ignore that factor. She's a dragon girl. Come on. Then yes, do summon. Only reason I'm not going to summon is because I have such a huge log of heroes that I still want to raise, and Yufina would just add another one on top of that. I do kind of want her, though, honestly. Well, we still have a week to decide. Maybe I will ultimately summon for her and they just have a bigger log, but who cares? I'll have Euphina then, that's cool. So I haven't made up my mind yet, but if you have, make sure to go up there in the poll, vote, and uh, give everyone else a good idea if they should. But yeah, it basically depends on where you're at at the game, which is kind of dumb to say because she is a hero that needs a lot of investment. All of her skills are good too, fully Molagora. To really make her shine, she does need high crit damage obviously high crit rate if you're just the type that likes to save for new heroes then i wouldn't say she's like 100 percent necessary or anything she is definitely a good solid all-round hero but i wouldn't say there's anything you absolutely need her for so if you just want to save up for new heroes again i'd say you can go ahead and skip her but those are my thoughts my opinion make sure to leave your own in the comments down below leaving a like if you haven't enjoy is always greatly appreciated as well thanks as always for watching and until next time